G'day guys, Tills20 here and welcome back to Border Town. Last episode I was working in the central square of Juarez and in this episode I'm going to be working on the outskirts of Juarez. And this is probably going to be the last episode for building in Juarez uh, and the next couple of episodes will be focused on building in, um, in the US, in Las Palmas. And then we are all wrapped up for this series. Um, of course, I've got a cinematic overview to do, which I haven't recorded yet, but I've got some really great ideas for what I'm going to be doing. Um, and before I get into everything that I'm going to be building in this episode, um, I, when planes fly over my house, I usually pause it and then I'll continue recording when it's gone over. But there have been so many planes flying over this morning that I'm probably not going to be able to do that. So if you can hear a loud roar, that's probably a plane flying over. So apologies for that. So this episode, I really wanted to focus on this particular area in Juarez where it's this like sprawl of suburbs that are on the outskirt of the city and they interact with this landscape in such a unique way. Um, a lot of these houses are perched on these ridges in a really peculiar manner and um, some of them look like they're about to fall off and some of them are nestled into the, uh, into the ridges around here too, some of the valleys. And this has been such an interesting and inspiring place for me to work in. It's one of the reasons why I started this series in the first place and I've only just got into this area. Um, that's mostly because uh, when I first designed this map and started building on Juarez, I sort of thought that I'd be in this area much earlier on and I'd have like quite a few episodes to work on it. But um, yeah, the scale was just right off and I'm only just hitting it now and it's only because I've done terraforming terraforming to get it closer to the border um, otherwise I wouldn't be able to reach this area um, that's just yeah one of the limitations with designing the map the way I did um, but we are here now which is great and I probably needed a few episodes to work on it but honestly uh, I just thought I'd try and capture what I wanted to capture in this episode and um, I think I'd do that. So definitely stick around for the cinematics or at least j jump on over to it if you're going to leave early because, um, yeah, I think I think they turned out all right. Um, definitely wanted to do a few more bits and pieces on it, but I'm, I'm quite happy with how they turned out. Um, and I also wanted another excuse to work with these brilliant assets that Beard Monkey created for this series. And these are the um, houses that sit in Juarez. A lot of them are designed purely for um for warriors like these are like houses that you probably probably wouldn't really find anywhere else in the world um i'm sure they're quite similar to other places that are in mexico but um yeah i think these are really quite unique houses but this whole area in particular is such an interesting and unique part of the world really i mean um, there's this highway that I'm not going to be able to build in this episode. I'm probably not going to ever build, but uh, there's this highway that actually is a drain pipe. So it's not a drain pipe. It's a it's a canal that is also for um, water runoff, and you can see where it connects up to the river, and then you can also see where roads go down into it. it. Took me ages to figure out what the hell was going on, but it's in fact a highway that also is a drain canal which is just insane and there's also this I mean just the way that the mountain interacts with the grids of this suburb as well um, I, I don't want to call it just a suburbs that's probably multiple different types of suburbs and um, all the shrubs as well like all the all the um, the nature that is within this area um, I really wanted to try and capture that too and look I probably don't really have enough time to really um, capture the whole essence of this area because I think what really makes this area so interesting at least interesting for me is just how many houses and how much of a sprawl it is and I'm not really ever going to be able to capture that unless I you know spent hours and hours and hours just doing the same thing over and over again um, to really capture how many um, how many people live here so this is really just a snapshot and probably the best I'll ever be able to really achieve because God knows I'm not going to spend that much time trying to um, build something like this. Um, 
And something that I really wanted to achieve is these ridges and the houses that sit on these ridges. So I decided to um, create one of these little ridge um, hillsides. I've probably already gone past it already in the time lapse, but um, yeah, I wanted to. I basically just dragged a, a dirt road up there and um, placed in a couple of the shacks that Beard Monkey also created. And um, they, um, yeah, I think they work quite nicely up there. Very peculiarly placed and they look like they might topple over, but that is the sort of look that I was trying to go for. Something else that I'm doing with these suburbs is I'm dragging the houses a little bit closer to the road so that there isn't really any space for a walkway. And that is also quite typical in this area too. Um, and I'm also using the ground textures. I can never remember the name of this mod, but um, I'm basically getting rid of the concrete um, that sits around a lot of these areas um, and particularly around the roads where the um, pavement is and I'm just turning it into dirt because I, I really wanted it to look like there was a lot of um, dirt around this area. It is quite a dry and arid environment and there would be a lot of um, sand being swept through these neighborhoods. So, you know, there's probably not a huge amount of concrete, well, at least from what I can see from Google Earth. It's not a huge amount of concrete that is exposed and um, yeah, it's amazing how much real realism that ended up creating. And um, something else as well is these roads that I'm using. Um, I originally used the uh, industries roads, but they were just a little bit too bright. So I ended up deciding to use these car park roads that's um, it's part of a mod or like a, I guess, asset collection, um, if you could call it that. Um, I've used these quite a lot in this series and mainly because they they're like really nicely broken up they don't have any crosswalks and um, they've got a really unique texture that i think really captures this area um, obviously there's quite a lot of people walking along the streets but i think that actually looks kind of cool um, you'll see it a lot better in the cinematics but a lot of people are actually walking along these streets and you know that is i think that is a really kind of a cool effect so quite happy with how those roads end up making this whole area look um, another reason why I wanted to work on this area is I wanted to use an asset that um, I thought would fit in quite nicely around here um, probably not that fitting but I don't know I thought it was a pretty good excuse to place it down um, and that's this gas station um, I can't remember who created this gas station but um, hats off whoever did because it's really just a fantastic looking asset and I decided to place it within this little corner here so um yeah I mean it's a bit of a mix of roads really and uh, yeah I thought that would work pretty nicely in the corner um, probably would be better this asset on the US border side um, but yeah I decided that let's place it down there and um, because I placed that there, I thought that I would actually create like a little bit of a pocket of um, industry and commercial too. And um, particularly if there's a, quite a lot of people that live in the surrounding neighborhoods, I thought that this area would be probably a bit more of a concentration of um, where people are actually accessing the city. So I thought that um, a little bit of industry and some commercial blocks would probably work nicely. So that's what I'm placing down here. And I'm um, just doing a little bit of detailing in the back lots of it because I thought that this area would probably have um, a lot of you know be a bit of a workshop where people are working on cars and um, I thought it would be a good excuse to place down some fences which I think I spoke about in a Marble Mountain episode but um, it's amazing how much detail a fence can create you're, you're back to be surprised of how how often a fence is um, yeah, how oft, how how many fences there are in real life? That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and I'm also again using Beard Monkey's fences that he created for um, Osara, which is another series I had about two years ago. If you've if you can remember that one, it's completely been playing for two years. Um, yeah, so I just decided to place in a bunch of different assets to you know make it look like a bit more of a workshop. Um, and I also really like the way that those houses. Um, sort of have, share the, the same backyard space um, because I think these sort of places would be very communal there'll be a very big sense of community around um, a lot of these neighborhoods and I wanted to play on that by giving a lot of people shared backyards um, so that they can um, you know share a lot of the same space can you hear that plane going over oh my god can't wait to move house 
Um, now, another thing that I wanted to achieve in Border Town that I, yeah, I think I achieved this pretty, really, really nicely. Um, I wanted to make an abandoned, um, an abandoned motel. Um, I've actually got another one of these on the US side on, in Las Palmas, but I wanted to really go to town on detailing this one. And in particular, I really wanted to detail this pool that is being all dried up and trash has been chucked into it and stuff and the way I've done this I don't know if you've noticed but I've used one of the canal pieces um, so the canal networks and just made it super small and um, decided to place down a bit of ploppable uh, I think it might be pavement ploppable pavement and then just sunk down a dirt decal into it which also has these muddy um, uh, I guess like muddy puddles in there too which also works quite nicely um, and quite often these abandoned pools will also have a bunch of rubbish chucked into it so I've decided to um, do that too and yeah then also thought you know while we're at a what let's just chuck in some uh, some other pieces that would probably be sitting around a pool so I really wanted this this um, this motel to have all the right elements that have that make up a pool but also have some um, you know, I don't know, almost like a life outside of it being a functional pool, a, a functional motel. So, um, you know, who has, you know, what kind of teenagers have rocked up and trashed this place even more? And um, is this place being used by people who hang out here or gangs or um, whatever? So I decided to place down a couple of extra things that probably didn't exist when the pool was or when the motel was operational. Also, quite a lot of people you'll notice will end up parking in this space too, but um, I actually think that would be still the case. I think that's, you know, the motel might be closed down, but people would probably still use the car park just to, you know, on their transit to work or whatever. Um, something that you won't see me do in the time lapse um, because I didn't have the asset on me, but I end up downloading a pool. So, not a pool, I keep on saying pool. I end up downloading a slide and um, placing it next to the pool so it looks like it's a, um, a slide into the pool. It just, it looks so good. It looks really, really good. So yeah, if you want to check that out, just wait for the cinematics. And just to finish off that, um, that corner, I thought some shrubs would be pretty nice around this um, little area too. Um, thoughts that, you know, continuing that nature, um, I don't know, it sort of feels like nature's of reclaiming areas or, you know, it's a real interaction between raw nature and a um, community. I thought, yeah, it should place down a bit more shrubs around that that little area. And um, I think that's something I'm really going to miss with Border Town is the types of, the types of shrubs and the types of um, nature assets that I have in this series. I think, you know, quite often in series, I have a vision in my head of how I can create that realism. So for instance, when I was doing my um, my Australian series, I really struggled with trying to capture the Australian outback and Australia, um, you know, the way that nature is in Australia. But um, that was a real struggle. Whereas in this series, I've been able to find the assets so easily and they work so nicely within the series too and I think we're gonna really miss that because I don't know when I'm going to be able to create similar a similar type of environment in a series because I think I'm gonna try and move on in terms of what types of assets and the sort of theming I'm going to be using I guess um, Marble Mountain will have similar aspects but I'm just not subscribed to the right things so we'll have to see what happens um, I've also been doing some decal work on the roads too. I wanted to have a couple of tiled areas because the the look that I was going for is I wanted it to almost look like when they first built these highways, they then, um, you know, they're obviously like, you know, really nicely tiled and they had like fountains and um, it was really well, uh, you know, not, not really well designed, but it was designed so that it was pretty. And then that was probably the last time they ever 
worked on it or they lo the low was like the last time they ever did any maintenance so um you know a lot of these tiles are now cracked or these fountains have now dried up or they've fallen over you also see me work on something in the um, middle of this roundabout too and I was going for the same sort of idea um, to make it look like the last time that this place saw any sort of maintenance was probably when they first built it um, and this is so the case in so many instances is you know they build a highway or they build um, you know they build a bit of infrastructure it looks fantastic and then that's like that's it so I've been having a lot of fun actually putting down a lot of the decals making it look nice and then putting some tufts of uh, tufts of graph 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 tufts of grass coming through the cracks um, yeah I've really always enjoyed doing that in Bordertown um, and that's actually something I could do in a lot of my other series as well which is yeah just a little technique that I use um, and continuing that theme of industry around this area I decided to put down a couple of warehouses and um, really playing with a lot of these dirt roads to really loving the way that these dirt roads interact with this environment and I'm also doing something with a lot of the residential props I'm placing them in some like more obscure places so for instance I've used some of the basketball um, hoops and I've placed them in an industrial area and the reason why I've done that is because there is a lot of people that live around this area and um, there's a not a lot of space so I thought that having um you know basically wherever there is available space even if it's within an industrial area or whether it's um, on the banks of this river then that's where people are hanging out and um, you know doing recreational stuff because there's not really any room for parks and um, people are sort of making their own recreational activities where space is available so I wanted to continue that look so quite a lot of areas will have um, you know places to play basketball or places like um, parks or um, gym equipment things like that you might notice me placing them down you might not because I'm being pretty fast with this time-lapse but I really yeah I think that is such a cool effect and I think it really makes um, this area feel more like a suburb a suburb that could really exist rather than just you know buildings that are being placed down um, and a lot of these props that I am placing down are again by Beard Monkey, who has pretty much carried me through this whole series. Um, most of the things that I'm using is, yeah, I buy that guy. What a bloody genius! And the last thing that I am creating is this roundabout. I wanted to have the look of what used to be maybe a statue that sat in the middle of this roundabout, but um, yeah, it's probably fallen over or been vandalized and. Now nature is slowly starting to reclaim it, which I think looks pretty cool. Um, and I didn't really mention this, but this roundabout's a, it's an absolute mess. <laughs> it, like it barely functions the way a roundabout should function and um, there's lines all over the place, but you know what? I, this, this episode took me ages to record. There's a lot, a lot of work that was in this episode and there's also quite a lot of, um, there's quite a lot of mistakes, so try not to look at the, the the things that I didn't really nail and appreciate the things that I did nail in this cinematics. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I really loved putting this one together. Um, we have probably two more episodes left of Border Town, including, so not including a cinematic overview, which I'll probably record in the next couple of weeks. I'm pretty excited to be doing. But guys, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.